So then like the hurricane is coming and I grew up in New Mexico. And so here's this desert girl who's now the director of operations trying to figure out what on earth I'm supposed to do. Us being shut down for a few days or a week or a couple weeks meant we might not be able to make payroll. We might not be able to pay our bills. And so I, you know, I felt this incredible responsibility to try to figure out how to manage all of that. Uh, Josie, thanks so much for being here with us. Oh, thanks for having me. I'm always happy to talk to you guys. Yeah, for sure. So how's uh, how's everything in your area of the country? You know, it's um, probably just like everybody else, dealing with homeschool and kids and working from home and all sorts of things. We've, uh, at Dental Intel, it has been working around the clock. I'm a little envious of people who say they have all sorts of time on their hands because uh, we are working like crazy to make sure that we are available for people. So it's been um, it's been crazy, but um, we're doing what we can. Yeah, yeah. No, I know. I, I was kind of thinking that same thing. I was like, all these people kind of this mandatory spring break right now. And mm-hmm. last week was just, I mean, look, my weeks are always pretty busy, but last one just seemed exceptionally busy. Um, so what um with with dental intel like what's what's the vibe around there what are you guys mm-hmm. on your team um what are you mm-hmm. working on right now through this you know um we just like dental offices are dependent on patients we're dependent on dental offices and so what i love is actually that the company has like springed into action and they're working so hard and so fast to provide value for dental offices. So actually what we've been working on is um, we have a couple of different, you know, we're known for data analytics, but we have so much more inside the platform. We have things that are called patient finder or morning huddle or so on and so forth. And our developers and our team's been working around the clock. And so we've, uh, we've adjusted some of our tools to best serve dental practices at this time. So we have something called the patient finder, which helps you take your big patient database, right? And filter it through. So for example, in the past, maybe it was, I was looking for a list of patients that were on a certain type of insurance that, you know, they're getting ready to renew. So we're going to focus on them, or I just want to find this type of whatever. And they've created a bunch of pre-built filters for COVID, which is awesome. Um, So that, and then, you know, we also have local med as our, you know, we're same company now. So Dental Intel um, is actually giving for their customers, allowing people to get on local med without any financial obligation right now, because um, we know that that is going to be so important when things, when the doors open. And so um, really just adapting the software to make it so that it's super simple for people when things return and keeping track of their patients to make sure they don't get lost in the cracks. So, um, you know, plus just putting out a bunch of resources on how best to manage and, and deal with your practice right now. So been, yeah. been putting out lots of content. Yeah. Yeah. No, I know, um, gosh, local med, I think anything that's like virtual platform for patients to interact with the practice is just huge right now. Is that, I mean, you guys are seeing that too, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. And I think we'll, you know, we'll get into how, you know, what you wanted to talk about with what I did with the hurricane and how we utilize that, which is in a way kind of similar to what practices are going through now. Um, But yeah, you have to be able to work remotely and dental teams aren't used to working remotely. We don't even have the slightest clue how to get started on that. Right, right. Now, now, your guys is in uh, culture there with with dental intelligence. Are you? Do people work remote? Has that? Has there been a lot of energy into like trying to figure that out or easy? Yeah, you know, we um, we have around 155 team members, and with the addition of local med, we do have a pretty big number of our team that works remotely anyway in various parts of the country. But in general, we do all go to the office who live here in Utah every day. So um, it's been, it's been um, a change for us to all work remotely, but you know, just we were pretty used to virtual meetings and things like that, but it's definitely puts more strain on it when it's everybody is virtual and trying to figure that out. Yeah. Are you guys on a, um, has there been a mandatory kind of lockdown or do you still have people in the office somewhere? 
No, we were, um, we, yeah, no, Weston asked that, you know, nobody goes to the office that we, that we stay at home and do our part. So there was a few people, you know, last week, the beginning of the week that were still there, like some people had to move their workstations or executives meeting, you know, working on planning and stuff like that. But for the most part, nobody's at the office, everybody's at home. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, we, we just went on a, I think our governor last night issued a mandatory lockdown. Wow. So effective at 12 noon today. So it gave mm-hmm. time for everybody to get to their businesses and get their stuff. Um, but yeah, so we'll, we'll see. We haven't really been out much at all though mm-hmm. for about a week. I think we went to the grocery store once. So um, how's, how's the family? I'm sure is, is Ethan just baking a ton? Mm-hmm. Yes, Ethan is baking a ton. And so now he's making like baking videos and challenging people to like watch his video, make two loaves, keep one and give one away to a neighbor that needs it with like the hashtag loaves of love, which is super cute. <laughs> you know, he's, uh, he's probably going to make a gluten free. So tell Joanna, he's probably gonna do a gluten free recipe video yeah. this week. But I was trying to think if I, you know, if I could be quarantined with certain people um i think you guys definitely <laughs> probably make the list even though i've never officially met ethan i've just yeah yeah it's not because me it's because my husband's an incredible cook. it's I fine think you, i think you play a role in that but you know intelligence only gets you so far then i'm like yeah. <laughs> but we get, we get around somebody that's cooking and you know has an intellectual mm-hmm. conversation then we're good um yeah, yeah and i've never even met him i have had his cinnamon rolls um and that was enough to probably put you yeah. in the top five of being quarantined with. Listen, I will hang on to his coattails wherever it gets me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, so Tess, I mean, you, you've been through something similar with Carolina's dentist. You guys had a hurricane that you went through. Give us a little bit of just kind of that scenario and situation, mm-hmm. what you guys did to prepare. I mean, obviously a little bit different, but probably some similarities, just disaster kind of response mm-hmm. type stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So before I was at Dental Intel, I was at Carolina's dentist and was there for several years and played different, you know, sat in different seats on the executive team. And so it was September of 2018 and like literally the week before I had taken the role as a director of operations. So then like the hurricane is coming and I grew up in New Mexico. And so here's this desert girl who's now the director of operations trying to figure out what on earth I'm supposed to do. So we operate on EOS, right? Our entrepreneurial operating system. And so pulled my team together and we just had a massive IDS session. So I had, you know, all of these like big whiteboards and IDS is like problem solving. Like it's a format for problem solving and discussion. So we just went through and we listed like all of the things that we were worried about, concerned about, didn't know how to handle. And then it was almost like, what are we going to do before during and after, right? So I think the, you know, one of the biggest takeaways is right now people are so overwhelmed with like just trying to figure out, especially owners, right? Of their businesses, um, trying to figure out what to do. And so being able to like make that list and then say, okay, like first things first, how do we prepare, you know, for this and how do we like protect our technology or protect our offices and how are we going to communicate with our team? So being able to work through that, I think that um, one of the most important things right now is having that regular cadence of communication with your team yeah. and um, being able to um, give them, you know, kind of the state of the union and keep everybody busy. So that communication is really, really important and establishing like backup plans for your backup plans. But I will say that, you know, one of the other really valuable things that we did within this process in, you know, was a little bit of fear setting. And I don't know if you've ever heard of fear setting. It was actually Tim Ferriss, right? A four hour work week has, has mentioned this. And he says, you know what you should, rather than we get kind of paralyzed when we're in these situations and we can't move forward because we're so worried about that terrible thing happening. And we actually should talk about what happens worst case scenario. So what happens if we can't open up until June 15th, like some of these poor offices are? What happens if we have to lay off our team? What happens if we have to file for bankruptcy? What happens? And being able to say like, okay, if that happens, like what, how long is that going to keep us down? What's the worst of it? How fast can we overcome that? But also how can we prevent those things from happening? So a little bit of context at this time, Carolina's dentist is owned by two dentists. So there's not like, you know, lots of money 
support in it in the background, like private equity or something like that. And um, because we had, we grew very large practices and we grew very, very quickly, you know, the company was only a couple of years old. Cash was, cash is king, you know? And so us being shut down for a few days or a week or a couple of weeks meant we might not be able to make payroll. We might not be able to pay our bills. And so I, you know, I felt this incredible responsibility to try to figure out how to manage all of that. So having a really good plan beforehand, doing some fear setting, right? Like what happens if this, having a plan B and a plan C, um, just that process of like facing that worst case scenario helps free up your mind. And then it was, let's go to work. Let's figure out what we can do. And in those moments we were super creative. And so, um, what we did is we were closed for a couple of days. We made sure that we were updating our team all along and we could reach them and they could reach us and ask any questions. We were very honest about what how was happening with the company and what the reality was because people want to know what reality is. Even if they don't like it, they want to know what it is. And then we made a plan to like come back, you know, and to, to come back and, and not just come back, but to, to rebound, to come back in full force. And so um, one of the things that we did was we recognized the community was still basically shut down. You know, lots of businesses were closed. People had their homes flooded um, and people were without electricity, right? But our offices were open. And we realized that one of the toughest things for us was cabin fever. Like my kids were home from school. We'd been stuck inside, you know, for days in this hot humidity and no electricity and whatever. We had such cabin fever like people are experiencing. So we decided to do this campaign where we were like, let's get the kids out of the house. Let's get mom out of the house. So we sent out across our social media like, hey, we have air conditioning and electricity and bottled water and we want you to come and we want you to bring your kids and we'll watch your kids while you get your teeth cleaned and, and then we'll take care of your kids. So we utilized dental intel. We, used, we utilized the patient finder and I made a list of all of the patients that were 18 and younger who had insurance benefits remaining who were due for hygiene. We created those lists. I sent them out to the team. They utilized local med and dental intel to follow up and they would send like an online scheduling link. So the team still worked remotely. And what happened was, you know, with being super creative with technology and leveraging our team, we were hit in late September, but October ended up being one of like the best month that we had had. Okay. Um, so I think that it's normal is out and we have to be creative, you know, and what and how we're going to come back. Yeah. What did, um, how long were you guys shut down for then? We were shut down. So one office was shut down longer than the others. Um, so, I mean, nothing like for, for COVID, but it was six days for one office and three to four days for the other offices. Gotcha. Okay. Mm -hmm. Did you guys see, did things bounce back pretty quick or was it, was it like a two to three week kind of just gradual ramp back up? Um, I mean, we put a lot of effort into it, but it was definitely, you know, patients, many of them, you know, were struggling, like wondering, you know, like my house is falling apart because it's flooded or whatever. So there, there was a little bit of a slower ramp up in those first few days. But actually what we found was a lot of people were really anxious to like get back to normal life. You know what I mean? So it was like where we felt the first couple of days actually that there was still this like heaviness yeah. of what had happened. And what I really appreciate about um, Dr. Eric Roman, who was the visionary at that time of the company is he said, you know what, guys, people want normal life so bad right now. Like they're so ready to get back to normal let's get them back to normal. Let's get them in, have a dental appointment, you know, get your teeth cleaned, get things taken care of. People want to get back to normal and we can provide that sense of normalcy. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's great. I was just even, um, last night I, Trump got on and was, was talking, um, you know, it's kind of this nightly address now. And, um, but one of the things he talked about is as soon as this starts to bounce back, like we're actually probably going to see this, this expansion, like this contraction mm -hmm. now within an expansion. Cause everybody's going to be so much pent up, just like demand for the economy. 
I mean, at, at some point, people are going to want to go out and just spend money on something because <laughs> you know, the, just the feeling of I bought something um, is going to be crazy. No, but I, I love what you said about fear setting. Um, in Tim Ferriss, yeah, he kind of walks you down that path of like, what's the worst thing that can happen? Mm -hmm. And how like if we don't, if that's a mystery, we fear it. But if you can actually name that and kind of walk through yeah. it, mm -hmm. it takes a lot of that anxiety out of it. Um, which mm -hmm. I think is really, really interesting. We had, um, we had a big restaurant a group here in Columbus, uh, Cameron Mitchell, who's kind of like this beloved entrepreneur, restaurateur of Columbus, tons of, of restaurants, but they, um, he was on CNN. They shut down. Well, that Monday, all the restaurants closed. Mm -hmm. They uh, laid off like 60% of their workforce. And he said, well, let's try and do the carry out uh, delivery thing. They did it for three or four days and realized it wasn't going to be a sustainable model. So they shut everything down. And he basically was like, we went into this worst case mode of we need to come out and reopen in three months. And so, or three or four months or whatever. And so like, what are we going to do? Yeah. Um, and I think it was interesting because I think he walked through that, like at worst cases, what if we just did nothing and with the hope of coming back out of it? So um, how, what are some keys to communicating with your team during this time, especially knowing now that it's almost going to have to be remote? Yes. Um, great question. You know, for us, we had a large team. So we had at that point probably 180 team members. Yeah. And um, we actually utilized, we created a secret Facebook group. Okay. And, you know, so patients can't find it. You have to approve people, right? And so we would do Facebook lives in there. People would ask questions. We would share things. You know, we would talk about um, which offices were open or closing or whatever because we're all connected on Facebook. We found that that worked really well for us. Yeah. Um, so making sure that you have a platform. If it's a small team, make sure that even if it's like a group thread, you know, um, is important or utilizing. I think the more that we can leverage video and we can see you and we can see your facial expression rather than just like in a text message. I think that being able to see each other is really important. So getting over the weirdness of like being on a Zoom meeting or I mean, even like Facebook Messenger, you could do, you know, like a video call or FaceTime. Yeah. So I think that team messaging is important, making sure that you're doing that. But I also think those one on one check ins. Are, are, are really important. So we had like an entire like communication tree, right? So if it was like, you know, we had to share something with somebody, who are the five people we share it with? And then who do they share it with? And it was all assigned and we had, you know, like very specific accountability to make sure that everybody was reached. And so sometimes um, I think we have to remember it's not just updates that we need, but it's just checking in with each other. You know, I appreciate my friend Sarah sent me a Marco Polo this morning and was like, Hey, haven't seen you like mental health check. How you doing? How you hanging in there? Yeah. And I think that we have to, we have to do that. But uh, you know, a combination of the video, the texting, the, you know, even if you're typing something up, like what your plan is yeah. like a one page, like here's what we're, how we're going to attack this, um, is important. Yeah. Yeah. No, I agree. I think, um, and this all day today, we, you're kind of squeezed in between a bunch of meetings. Yep. Here. Just, uh, you know, our, our team, our big meeting day is Monday. And so mm -hmm. uh, we just moved it all to zoom and laid out like, here's all the links, here's all the meetings, here's all the times. Um, but it was good. Like getting everybody on that call this morning and just seeing faces. It's like, we say that all the time. I'm like, we, right. you know, we always try and tell clients like get video on your website. Why? Yeah. Because of this, because right. like it just connects, you know, and now we're, I think we're seeing that for sure. Um, we are doing a daily, like, we still do a daily check-in in the morning video okay. call. It's super fast, even like 10 minutes. Like with the whole team or just like? With, so with our, like with our little department. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, but then um, we do like once a week, you know, and we have like Weston is sending us stuff and like our internal communication and he's going to give us like a weekly update on like business type stuff, right? Yep. Which is good. Um, but then, you know, the expectation that leaders are checking in. Um, on their team. So anyway, I think still having like that morning huddle. Yeah. Is super important. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and I want to, we, we definitely got people watching on Facebook. So I just want to throw it out there. Like if you've got questions, leave them in the comments. I've got that window open. 
right here as well. And uh, we'll pull some of those questions uh, as Josie's talking. So um, you mentioned earlier the whole kind of state of the union address and in giving like defining reality for people, um, how much is too much reality? Like where's that line between mm -hmm. going like, here's what's up and it might scare you and, but here's the mindset that we're gonna yeah. move forward with. Yeah, I think that so much has to do with the messenger, you know what I mean? For especially if you are the owner and you're doing that, um, we as team members are gonna look to you to decide how should I feel about this? And it's okay to be vulnerable and say, guys, this kind of sucks and I'm kind of scared too, but I'm confident yeah. that we can get through this and I'm confident that we can come together. So I think that people want to know the reality. Like what we don't want to do is sugarcoat things and say, everything's going to be fine and it's good, it's whatever. And you know, everybody's going to get paid through this time and 100% of people are going to come back. If you were, if you know what your business looks like and it's like, hey, when we reach this level, we might have to look at, you know, pay. When we reach this level, we might have to look at layoffs. Um, you know, I think that for us, it was like our company address was like, this is the reality of the situation. What we want more than anything is to come out of this and everybody's job is intact and the business is intact. But just know that depending like with each passing day, we have to take a look at what are the expenses of the business and how best can we do this. So um, what I think is really interesting here is that um, this, this is like if we were playing a card game and we all knew where everybody was in relation, like who's in a good position and who's not and who's got all of their chips. I think that we're now playing a totally different game. Like we still have our cards. Mm -hmm. We still have our talents, our skills. You know what I mean? Our resilience. We still have our knowledge, our education. But this is completely changed. Like the game is different. We're playing a totally different game. And I think that this could be the greatest opportunity of our lives. It could be the greatest opportunity for the dental industry because as things have fallen apart, we have the opportunity to help put things back together. And so, um, you know, there are team members who maybe they've lost their job. They're reevaluating who do I want to work for? What's the type of organization that I want to commit to? And, you know, owners are looking at their team and trying to figure out how best to do it. So I think that as things are falling apart, um, you know, with, with you guys always talking about your story is worth it. We are writing history every single day right now. And we are writing our story and we have the opportunity to write the story and to not let the story be written for us. And um, it's just so important that we are more aware and more present and we're not letting fear take over, but we're methodically going through the decisions that we have to make and trying to put things back together in a better way. Yeah. Yeah. No, I agree. I think there's going to be tremendous opportunity on the other side of this for sure. Um, and also a question here, Dan O'Rourke says, uh, how do you prepare yourself for the future? What's the best way to be ready for the next virus or when, whatever may be our next challenge? So, and, and I'll just kind of preface this because I think, I think a lot of us, you know, what always happens in an economy like that is, is we all get a little soft. We all get, have probably less reserves and we, we should because nothing bad will ever happen. We're all a little overextended. Um, but yeah, like, so there's a lot of people finding themselves in a situation where they're like, man, I should have been more prepared. So how do you, how do you prepare yourself for the next round, whether it's two years, five years, 10 years? Yeah. You know, if you've, if you've ever heard of the black swan, the idea of like a black swan theory, right? There's a book about it. And what he says is that, um, you know, for, for years, we always thought that there was, that swans were always white, you know, hundreds of years, they were always white. And then suddenly in some country, somewhere else, they find that there's a black swan and suddenly our whole view of things changes. So like nine 11 was a black swan. COVID is a black swan. And so it's not something we ever anticipated, but likely something like this was going to come up. So there will be more black swans in our life. It may not be a virus, right? It might be something that is totally different that we're not prepared for. And I think that, you know, the beauty of this is that we have to, to do like to take stock in our lives. Like how are we spending too frivol frivolously? You know, should we get rid of debt? Should we pay down our debt? Should we live a more simple life? And I think that, you know, the thing that 
is super important is we have to take better care of ourselves. We have to, um, you know, do what we can to boost our immune system and take care of our mental health. And we have to take care of people. So it might have been the COVID virus that threw this on you. It could have been a car accident on the way to work. Thankfully, now you're not having that because you're stuck at home. But these events will come up in our lives. And I think that it's just making wise decisions and preparing for, we can't prepare for everything, but that fear setting does help, right? That fear setting and being like, how, what, what is the worst thing that could happen and how can I prevent that? Yeah. That'll give you some ideas. Yeah. Yeah. No, I love that. Cause I think we definitely, especially Americans, we can almost have that, that superman, superwoman mentality where it's just mm -hmm. like, it's invincible, you know? Mm -hmm. And, um, I know I've always been, um, me and my business partner have always been very conservative with expenses for the most part. And uh, mm -hmm. we both come out of situations and, and organizations that were just too, too tight with expenses, right? You've got people calling, you've got this whole collection strategy yeah. of throw them this much this week and throw them that much and mm -hmm. employees getting paid late on expenses. And, and we were fortunate to kind of come out of that and go, we never want to do that again. Mm -hmm. um, we're always current on it, on, you know, bills and invoicing and all that stuff. And so you know, it's, it's, it, now we're sitting here, we're like super thankful um, that there was just a little bit, you know, a level of responsibility there of, right. of hey, if something were to happen, we need mm -hmm. some reserves. We need months to be able to take care of our team. Um, so, um, but yeah, I, I love that. What, um, as you're, as, because you've come out of this group practice space, what do you, are, are group practices being affected differently? Should they be responding differently? Like I would imagine at the top in that leadership team is probably that, that workload right now of just helping so many practices respond is huge. But what's your take on that space? You know, um, there have been like nights in the last couple of weeks that I've gotten up in the middle of the night worried about it and and it been like, oh, like I can't imagine, I can't imagine being in that position today and having to make some of those really, really tough calls. So um, is it affecting groups? Absolutely. I mean, I have friends that are running groups that they're laying off 60 to 75% of their team right now. And so, um, yes, I, it does affect them, you know, depending on, uh, you know, are they backed by private equity? So they might have a little more reserves, but what is, you know, what, what is the comfort level in the churn rate on the cash and things like that? So um, I think that some groups probably have a better buffer than maybe some of the single practices. Um, but I think that in general, we are probably going to see people come back and try to be leaner with you know their team because i mean in general like and this is not a bad thing we were we were all problem i mean most businesses are running a little bit fat and i think that this forces people to try to figure out can we do this can we come back a little leaner a little smarter a little more focused on certain things so um i can't say for sure you know how it might be affecting groups or solo docs differently. I think everybody's probably just trying to figure out how best to manage it. I think that you've got Emmett coming on later this week, don't you? I do tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, He's way smarter than this and than I am. He's going to be able to answer those questions for you. Yeah, no, I know. I'm looking forward to, to having him on because I think, um, you know, I, I think anytime you see something like this in, in the economy, you always, you can look back and always see a bubble. Um, right. And, you know, and I think dentistry's had one, for mm -hmm. sure. Um, and I think this is going to correct that a little bit. I mean, you know what, when we were delivering, wow, we had dinner with Emmett and he expressed kind of the same thing of mm -hmm. it's a really, really good economy right now. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And I don't know, there's probably this perception that groups are big so they can handle this really well. But I think a lot of times it's the opposite. That's true. Yeah. Yep. You're exactly right. I think a lot of them are probably very over leveraged. And when something like this happens, yep. um, yeah, it can be tougher for sure. So, uh, what are you doing personally to maintain your sanity? You know, um, I definitely have done some fear setting myself, right? Where it's like, okay, worst case scenario, what happens if Josie loses her job? You know, what happens, you know, and, um, I, that has been helpful, but 
establishing like a family routine has been super important. And so, you know, I'm down in the basement working right now, but I have to make sure I get out of the basement and go get some sunshine. And so in during the day, like even if it's just a walk around the neighborhood, I'm getting outside connecting with my kids. We're playing more games. So rather than like watching TV or whatever, we're trying to play more games. Um, but I, I didn't get to do it last week, but I know I'm going to have to have like a regular like exercise doing my daily mindfulness, you know, routine, staying connected with friends. And honestly, like I, I love being busy. And so um, just trying to find ways that I can help and ways that I can serve. And I've taken a lot of calls with different um, dental offices or people that, that know me and have said, Josie, I just need somebody to talk to. And so being able to serve um, has been helpful for me. Yeah. Um, and that's a big deal. But I think just trying to be really mindful of the basics, you know? Yeah. yeah. No, I think, um, yeah, I, I, it's that whole kind of, you got to take care of yourself first. Um, mm -hmm. And I realized... Monday, I mean, Monday I got into it. I was like, you know, I just got to get up a little bit earlier. Got to make sure I get my, my mind right. And typically for me, it's like, I've had that, that morning time. I'm actually reading. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with this at all, but, um, do you know Rumi at all? No, I don't. It's, um, so a friend just gave this to me for my birthday, but, um, and I forget, it's like a, he was, I don't know, Parisian, um, yeah. poet or something. But anyway, it's like poetry, but it's like spiritual kind of poetry so it's been like really good well oh, cool so I've been going through that and then I got Mark Costas's like for futures journal that he gave me for my mm -hmm. birthday and I started kind of working through that so just like making sure that like, that time happens yes mind straight and then I'm usually good about three or four but I get wrapped up by the time I, I'm just in all these phone calls and emails and responding and mm -hmm. it's really easy to think that the world is like ending yeah. Um, and then I usually exercise, get my head back and I'm like, all right, let's mm -hmm. cook dinner. Let's have fun with the kids. Let's hang out. But just, yeah, making sure I'm keeping myself in yep. the right place. Mm -hmm. Um, I think you, sh I mean, you're doing a little bit of this already, but you just being the face of dental intelligence as much as possible through this and helping people, I think is huge. Um, Thank you. We, you, you know, we have a bunch of webinars going on right now, like three times a day, yeah. which are awesome to support people in this and putting out a bunch of stuff. But yes, um, just trying to share it. Like the story that I had was unique, right? And that it was, your office was closed and now you have to open and utilizing the platform and the software. So like I, I, I wear the dental Intel t-shirt now, you know, I work for the, t for the company and the team. And part of my decision in that was because I recognized how powerful it was. So, um, no, I'm, I'm confident that if people use it, they can slingshot back, bounce back. Um, and it's, it's an honor for me to get to share that information with people. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. Uh, one other question here. How would you talk to a team member that's fearing they will lose their job or has already lost their job over this? Mm -hmm. I think that as leaders, there's an incredible opportunity that even if you have to deliver bad news, doing it so with loving kindness. And, you know, I know lots of people that they have to lay their team off, but they're get, they're gathering all of the necessary information and resources and guiding them like, you know, here's how you file for unemployment. Here's how you do this. Here's how you do that. Um, I know some people are trying to help other people find a job where they can work. Um, so I think just loving people with that. And, you know, we can't, depending on the situation, like if you've got plenty of financial reserves and you can tell a team member, like, listen, as long as you know, we're working together, we're going to be fine, we're providing value, we're going to get through this. I do think that this is a huge opportunity for team members, if you're a team member, to provide incredible value for the practice right now during this, this time by developing processes or systems or things like that. But I think we just have to be honest and we have to be open and we have to do it in a kind, loving way. So even if it is you know what, I'm doing everything that I can to make sure that you can keep your job. Depending on how this goes and what is out of our control, you know, I can't promise that it's going to happen, but I am doing everything within my control to make sure that that doesn't happen. And if it does happen, you will hear it directly from me and I will do everything I can to help you find something to take care of your family. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. 
Um, what's been the, the response there in, in Utah? Like are most practices, were they immediately shutting down and laying off their team? Are some of them looking at it like a two week break or like what's, what's the vibe there? It's definitely a mix. Um, you know, like, like actually probably a few days into this, um, the f- front page of the Salt Lake Tribune was like one practice was like, yep, you know, close it down. And then another one was a new dentist doing a startup. And he was like, if I shut down I shut down my practice, like I, I can't, you know, I can't do this. So I'm hoping that with the things that we're seeing, you know, coming out with um, SBA stuff and IRS stuff, like all of these different, ins- I, I'm hoping that people are really, really taking advantage of that and educating themselves and empowering themselves with information so that they can take advantage of that assistance and that help. Um, but it's, yeah, it's just a mixture. I, I still see plenty of practices that they are hard, hard at work um, taking advantage of this time to do things that they normally don't have time to do. Yeah, yeah, for mm-hmm. sure. And I think we've seen a mix too. Ohio was um, was definitely one at the kind of the forefront of this. And I, I think we might've been like the third state to hit like 3,000 cases or something. And so mm-hmm. that we have this uh, very proactive, uh, aggressively proactive governor um, that's just kind of been out in the front line. So I think a lot of just Monday, it was almost just like everybody, um, mm-hmm. a lot of practices just shut down, laid okay. everybody off because of the wanted, you know, kind of altruistically wanted to be able to teams to be able to get in the front of unemployment and, and process right. their problems. Um, but yeah, it's, it's been interesting. Uh, Cause I've been, I've been trying to challenge practices to like, you know, communicate that we're, it's not we're closed except for emergencies. It's we're open for emergencies, right? You know, yeah. to be there for the community and just yeah. mm-hmm. how your language. But yet I'm also seeing it. And I don't know if you've seen this on the other side of it, which is crazy, but like then dental practices getting criticized by other dental practices for being open and, you know, yeah. putting everybody else at risk, um, which I think is kind of crazy, but it is crazy. And it's not what we need right now at all. And, you know, I know that, with everything going on, we are not ourselves and we have to try to do what is best for us and offer others the benefit of the doubt. One of, one of the recommendations that I did have is for those who are open, right, for emergencies, and you guys talk about this all the time, but making sure that their patients know that they are through, is that communicating through social media or whatever, but if you have local med, use that local med link and attach that in your social media or whatever so people can click that and schedule with you. Yeah, yeah, no, that's smart for sure. Um, cool, last last thing I'll just kind of circle all the way back to is you, you originally started off talking about this idea session that you had with your team when the hurricane came mm-hmm. through. And, and I love that. Uh, we, we did that with my team Monday, um, last Monday, just kind of going, Hey, here's what's up. And yeah. part of it for us was going, Hey, we had all this social media content scheduled for two weeks and it's just not relevant right now. Mm-hmm. Um, and just kind of reworking everything. But I know as a leader, as a business owner, I felt overwhelmed with what are we going to do? But once I kind of came through those team meetings, yeah. and got them involved. Like it was just, it was like, okay, we got this. Um, so how do you, I, I know there's probably a lot of dentists and business owners in that situation where they're just, they're f- probably feeling overwhelmed, like they have to solve everything, but yeah. how do you get your team involved in this through this time mm-hmm. and go, Hey, I, I need you to step up and let's all share a little bit of a load. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Great question. So actually there is, um, a concept and I was talking about it with somebody else in a conversation, this idea of, um, what's called a tiger team. And it came from like Apollo 13. And it's this idea that when things are in chaos, if we leave it up to just the leaders to make the decisions and things have to go up and down, we've already wasted too much time. And so this like tiger team is this like specialized team of highly capable people that you give them authority and autonomy and like, here's, here's what we need to have happen. Go make it happen. And so I think, you know, one coming to your team and being open and honest with them about all of the things that need to be solved and making that list of all of the things that need to be solved and then being able to identify what are the things that only the owner needs to handle, you know, um, and, and can you give them those most important things? And that's going to be things like 
looking at, you know, what type of government assistance there might be or what type of implications there might be, or maybe it's working, you know, I don't know, whatever it is, those most important things. But then who are the appropriate people to delegate the other things to? So like, if an office manager is the one who's responsible for identifying and figuring out how they're going to work with vendors, if they're the ones that are, you know, going to communicate with the team, if it's your hygiene team, putting them together on a project of how can we, how can we make sure that when we come back, hygiene is going to be packed full with like the right patients and the best patients. So learning, you know, having their team learn things like how do you use dental Intel or local med or your patient communication software, like taking the time for them to become experts and then sharing with the team and making recommendations on the process. What's nice about what's happening with all of this is um, we're all fighting for the betterment of of our industry, of our job, of our practice, of our office. And so people want to help. People want to contribute and they just need some guidance or some things that they need to work on. So bringing that team together in, you know, a full team meeting, maybe listing out what are all of the things we need to figure out, being able to delegate and assign clear accountability and clear expectations for what that looks like and then sending them to go out, to make decisions, to have, you know, some of that autonomy and decision-making ability and then coming back to the team and being able to share. So think of like, you know, if you're, if you're into sports, think about what is your specialized team and how are they going to help you in the game? Yeah. Yeah. Gosh, I love it. I'm sitting here taking notes too. Like this is, this is (laughs) self-serving. You're you're helping me for sure. Um, Yeah. I mean, we, we our content kind of writing team right now there's four or five uh, on that and and it's just been like vital like mm-hmm. there's a part of like everybody that's producing and, and they're amazing but then it's right. like, hey we've got to we've got to communicate well we've got to lead well we've got to produce our content has to look different so they've been key stepping up um nod says i've had yeah i've had a dentist criticize us on social media saying stop with advertising yourself so yeah not cool but, um, oh, and then, uh, and then Emmett says, um, groups are growing fast, just short on cash, which makes sense. Um, mm-hmm. sure. so, Hey, look, um, I'm, I'm gonna let you go. Cause we're, gosh, we gotta be at 40. Yeah. 42 minutes. So I totally appreciate your time. Thanks so Thank much. You. Sorry about that little hiccup in the beginning. Oh, no. You know what? I mean, I'm like, this is really, I think my first live interview. I did my first webinar last week. So it's like, we're all doing new stuff, you know? And you're killing it. We just appreciate all you guys or your whole team is doing. You guys are putting out some amazing stuff. So thank you for doing that for the industry. Oh, you're welcome. Um, you know, if you need anything, you know, let me know for sure. Um, look, I, I think you have such a great voice right now. Uh, I just encourage you to like get out there as much as you can represent that company, be the face of that company. Just take it over and run with it. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for that. It's a nice compliment. <laughs> Um, yeah, no. And I, yeah, I appreciate you jumping. I know we were in, um, well, you bailed on us in new Orleans the last night. I was trying to be responsible and not expose myself to a large group of people, but it killed me, killed me. You hadn't exposed yourself to a large group of people. Listen, I know, I know, but gotta (laughs) start to think about my kids. And I was like, Oh, I can't, I gotta be careful. No, that's fair. That's fair. No, I was just, I, I actually, I was wanting, there were some things I was, I was like wanting to ask you and talk to you about. And I was like, oh, I'll see you. But you know, like when you get in that speaking mindset, I think for two days, I just, because I was the last speaker, you just have that low level anxiety like that whole time. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, and then I kind of got through that. And I was like, oh, I, I want to like talk to Josie about some of these things. And then like you bailed. So it's cool. You just actually, no, you just wanted to try to point out if yours was better than mine. Let's, <laughs> Let's just tell everybody the truth about this nat this like friendly little competition you like to like he likes to like poke the bear. Mm, I know. Mm. Um you know what it's it's So if there's if there's gonna be like a speak a thon, like you know, throw down. Yeah, you know what? I it makes it makes us better. You know, you get a little competition. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, you beat me at yep. that talent for sure. Um but it's cool. You know, it's cool. 
And you upped your game and you killed it at Delivering Wow. And I'm excited for the rest of the world to get to see that while they're posting on Delivering Wow. Yeah, that was fun for sure. Yeah, I still think you got ranked higher. If, if I think there's surveys or something that say you were you were better, but it's all no, <laughs> no. All right. Well, hey, um, you guys stay safe. Uh, please let me know if you ever need anything from us. Um, yeah, we're more than happy and, and keep keep spreading your wisdom around because it's super helpful right now for sure. Thanks.